And good afternoon, everybody, or good evening. It's five o'clock in the UK, wherever time it is around the world for you, then hello. Uh, my name is Paul Grogan, and to now is the second of today's live streams. We've just finished live streaming Expedition to Newdale. That's on the channel now, if you want to go back and watch it. Well, good evening. It's five o'clock. Paul's got his UK, phone on. I thought I'd put it. There we go. Apologies for that. Um, so today we are doing Dedeo Cheng. Now, I don't know how you pronounce this. If you know how you pronounce this, Please send me an audio clip. I don't. I don't know how you pronounce it. This is Dedoe De -De -De Cheng, second edition. Original game came out in two thousand and fifteen. Uh, this is the second edition, which came out at Essen Spiel just a few weeks ago. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be learning how to play the game from the rulebook and then playing through a two-player game of it. Uh, so, as mentioned at the start of the last stream, but if you're watching this one, this is not a sponsored video. This video and a lot of the other content that I make is only possible through the support of my patron campaign. So a massive thank you to all of my patron supporters for making this possible. Um, and because it's not a sponsored playthrough video, um, I'm basically not going to much effort beforehand. We don't know anything about this game. I'm going to switch over to the multi-cam review now. Paul's here with me again. All right. Josh is here. And Paul is saying he knows absolutely nothing about it. So yeah, the chat is uh, the chat's gone a bit skewed again there you go uh bruce is here as long as work will allow it keep the sound down anyway dadoa cheng and you know less about this one than you did the previous one i know nothing about this nothing, nothing about ever. this well i've just told you it's the second edition of a game from four years ago that's what i know now there you go <laughs> right so yes um for those people who haven't watched any of these videos before you might think this is a bit unusual uh and i did the first time i did one of these but the feedback that i've had is that people like these videos this is basically simulating the experience you're going to have yourself at home. Um, and if there are any problems with the rule book, we're going to uncover them right here, right now. So if you've got this game or you're interested in it, Tony's here. Thank you, Tony. I knew you were going to, well, I was hoping you were going to join in because I know you love the game, which does mean you are my rules guru. So if we get stuck, I'm going to be asking you for help. Pronunciation, probably something like da da do cheng, da da do cheng. Right. Excellent. There we go. So. Dadado Cheng is a family game with a focus on manipulating resource discs in a central area. Players take on roles of foreign traders in Dadao Cheng, Taiwan at the turn of the 20th century. Through swapping and flipping resource discs in the central area, players obtain resources and either trade these resources to the rest of the world or spend them to buy different types of buildings within the city. The objective of each player is to come, become the most, most prestigious trader. Uh, there we go. Right. Components. Let's see what we've got. We have a game board. There we go. We have four player resource boards and four player shipping boards. I'm assuming that's one of each. Now, the resource boards look like, yeah, a warehouse on the top. Yeah. Right. Whereas the shipping boards look like a different kind of warehouse. Right. Yeah. So resource boards, shipping boards. We have 16 resource discs. Uh, there appear to be five different types. Now, I haven't even unpunched this, so you are literally getting an unboxing. Kent is here from Icarus Mustburn. Thank you very much for joining in. Um, yeah, cool. One, two. And, and it's Tony. It's, it's your fault why I've got Seven. this. So I hope it's good. If it's not good, it's your fault. Because um, you said it was good. So basically, I, um, I sort out a copy. Yeah, that looks like 16, 16 in there. resource either. discs. Right. 50 resource cubes. 10 of each colour. Uh, we have sugar, which is red. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, white, which is rice. Tea, which is green. Camphor oil, which is yellow. And opium, which is black. Now, is the camera picking up the green and the black? It is. Right, that's good. We have 36 player markers. Four colours, nine in each colour. Okay, that's these. And we have one red die. Not just any die, it's a red one. Oh no, we got two. Right, the game's faulty. Take it back. So the rule book says one red die, and I have two. So if somebody out there has a copy of this game missing a red die, I have your red die. We only need one of them. One Chinese rule book and one English rule book. I think I threw the Chinese rule book away. Um Tony's giving, giving us a summary now, but we don't want a summary. We're going to learn how to play from the rulebook. 
Right. Did so you say there was supposed to be 10 of every colour of the resource cubes? Because there yes. aren't. Okay. So we've got an extra red die. And we're missing five black. Four. Four black, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about the other. Carry on. I'll tell you no, about I think that's about it. It looks, the, the, the rest look right. Yeah. So we're missing yeah. five black cubes. Four, four black cubes. Four black cubes. Okay. Well, we might have to go and get four sure, black cubes. I'm sure cubes we can find four black cubes somewhere. From another game. We also have cards, which, yeah, haven't been opened yet. No, there's one extra green. Okay. <laughs> we'll paint that black. And there's one white that's a completely different shape than the other. Yeah. Right. So, cards. Doesn't say how many, but we do have an anatomy of the cards. So, let's go through that. What have I done with my remote again? It's there. Right. Let's zoom in a bit on these cards. And let's just deal some of them out. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> oh wow. So we've we've got fifty cubes. Yeah. But we had eleven of each of those four colours. Yeah. And we had six in six, six black. black. Right. Okay. Black is opium. I wouldn't expect those to be the same number. It does say ten each of sugar, rice, tea, camphor oil, and opium. That's what it says in here. Anyway, right court cards let's have a look at these cards let's um let's move the board out of the way so we can see the cards a bit clearer because there is a card anatomy in the rule book so we have at the top the card name we have the ability down at the bottom oh and that's it right so card name ability down at the bottom mm -hmm. right that's all we got right resource discs let's just have a look at the resource discs because there's a bit of information about them pop them here right okay. so what we have on these is uh, so the main thing represents the current resource so this one for example this is yellow this represents camphor oil but two the color at the bottom tells you what's on the back right okay yeah so there's two colors on each that's what's on the front yeah. that's what's on the back mm -hmm. the sun side is what's face up at the start of the game so they basically they did all they're yeah. all face up the start of the game, and some of them have a resource space on them. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yanis uh, here from Brittany. Hello, you're betting on Paul. Yeah, good one. <laughs> and Tony's saying that you only have six opium in your second edition copy too. So let's assume the rule book is wrong. Yeah, and it's not ten of each. It lies. Right. Okay. Oh, also, whenever you see a blue cube, yeah, it's any colour. Yeah. Right. Off we go then. Set up. Place the game board at the middle of the table. I'm expecting some slight translation issues, but hopefully we'll be able to work it out. Right. Game board, middle of the table. Place the die on the city god temple, which is up there. Turn the resource discs with the side having the sun facing up. Place the four opium resource discs at the four corners randomly, which is here. Place the remaining resource discs randomly on the circles. Okay, so stick the other ones down randomly. All sunny side up. Now, no more than three resource discs of the same colour can be in a contiguous group doesn't say what to do if you have that I guess you mix them around do we have what which is a resource group well I guess the type it is so yeah I think we're good there's a group of three here but that's fine no more than three okay place the six types of building cards so two mansions two veggie vendors two herb Sorry, I'm still looking at that, but... That's okay. a contiguous group of three. Yeah, but I'm not sure how you, there can be more than three, because there only seem to be three of each anyway, apart from the black ones. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Right. 
Yeah. So that's a bit odd. No more than three resource disks of the same color can be in a contiguous group. Yeah, that is a bit odd because there is only three of each. Right, anyway, buildings. Two mansions, two veggie vendors. Hmm. Ah, okay. There's a veggie vendor. Pizza's here. No, Oliver's here. Oliver's here. There's Hi, a Oliver. mansion. There's a veggie vendor. Yeah, so two two mansions. There's, there's okay, two mansions, two, two veggie, veggie vendors. Vendor. Two herbal shops. Two workshops. Two two numerology halls. And two grain shops. Yeah, okay, hang on, hang on. Numerology hall. Did you say workshop? I did. No. Two workshops? No. Okay. No workshops. What do we have instead? We've got tea shops, numerology halls, grain shops. Grain shops, yes, but not tea shops. You didn't mention tea shops? No. Okay. So these must be workshops or... So in the image, we have an image here which shows tea shops. So I think we have a typo in the rule book. So I th think that is should a, be that's workshops. a workshop. I okay, think so. Fine. In a two-player game, with the exception of the mansions, use only one of each type of building. Okay. Uh, and they get placed up, placed face up next to the board. Are they going in the box? Yeah. Put that here. Right. So we want to put these around the board. And then put the other three over here. That's, that's how it's got it in the image. Let's zoom in a little bit while we while we still can. <coughs> right. Uh, take the historical event card 1851 and use it as the event card for the first round. Shuffle the remaining historical event cards and place them face down on the historical event card space of the game board. Which is here. Doesn't say what we do with this, but we'll just put it here for now. According to the name of the company at the side of the board facing the player, each player takes a player resource board of the corresponding company name. That's this. I don't. Well, I, I seem to have the right one. Yeah. Well, I've got two different ones, so I'm probably yeah, not, not right. Not that one. So we need the player resource board of the corresponding company name, a player shipping board. I mean, are all the shipping boards the same or are they different as well? I yeah. don't know. That, I that, 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 that one matches that. And that yep. one matches that. So. Okay. And then you put those like that. So we don't need that one. Um, Thor moaning because he's now, now shut in. If you can hear the meowing in the background, that's our cat. Um, nine player markers. I'll be blue, although I think I'm green. I'm green. I think I'm blue. I don't know. No. Uh, not sure what colour I am. Red. Ah, is yeah. It? Okay. Okay, nine player markers. Place the player markers on the starting spaces with the white frames on the player resource board and player shipping boards. White frames. Hmm. Okay, well that sort of is a, it's a bit white. Yeah, okay. Oh, there's one there. There's one there. There's one there. Yeah, they're not that easy to see. There's one there. And there's one there. There we go. You can see the, you can see them. I can see some okay. Them. Place a black cube on the space showing calendar one on the turn track. On the space showing calendar one. That's that. That's why. Right, okay. Place all remaining cubes next to the game board to form a supply. That's those, and we don't need those player markers. We can get rid of those. Uh, please give advance warning if sneezing again. <laughs> it wasn't a sneeze, it was a cough. Yeah, it's probably going to happen quite a bit. But... Right. 
flow of the game. Are you ready? I think I'm ready. Okay, flow of the game. Game is played over six rounds. The player who most recently drank tea is the start player. 20 years Certainly ago. Certainly not me. 20 years ago for me. Probably longer for me. Oh, we'll roll. Evens, it's me. Evens. All right, I'm the start player. Um, that's what the other dice is for. Determine the starting player. Right, play continues in clockwise order. So in each round, starting with the starting player, player turns are taken in order. A player's turn includes in order the following stages. I don't know if this is printed on the board anywhere, but have a look for it if it is. Warehouse stage, resource disk manipulation stage, and then the work stage. So there are three stages that we do. Might be this. Looks like this. Yeah. Right. Warehouse stage. In the warehouse stage, players can choose any two warehouse spaces. Yeah, it's that. Look. Take all cubes thereon and skip the resource disk manipulation stage and enter directly the work stage. Right. Which I think means you can do it, but if you do it, you skip to state. Okay. You, you, you miss the second bit. Yeah. Okay. And then there's, there's an image that doesn't make any sense. Um, Oh no, there's some dotted lines. Right, so it looks like these are warehouse spaces. We don't have any cubes on them at the start of the game, unless I've missed something. No. No, we haven't missed anything in setup, but I assume at some point in the game, cubes are gonna appear on here. So if you wanted to, in stage one, you can choose any two warehouse stages, take all of the cubes, but then you skip the next bit. Okay, right. Second stage, resource disk manipulation stage. The player must perform two actions, each of which being swapping the positions of any two resource disks or flipping a resource disk. Okay, and they don't have to be adjacent. So you swap any two resource yeah. disks or you flip one over. So you perform two actions, each action can be that. Right, note. The player's objective is to create three or four resource disks of the same type in a straight line. Players may take the same action twice. Prior to taking an action, if a cube is on a resource disk that you want to use for the action, move the cube to the warehouse space of the same row of the active player. Okay, so mine would come down here. Full warehouse. When moving a cube to a player's warehouse space, if there are already two cubes there, the player gains the cube, which you can use in the work stage. Make sense? Yeah, I think so. Right, that's manipulate resource disks. Then, gain resource. When three or four resource disks of the same type are in a straight line, the player does the following in order. One, gains cubes. Gain cubes, cube or cubes, for the corresponding resource type. So for three or four disks of the same type, Gain one or two cubes. So three discs is one cube, uh, four discs is two cubes. Mm -hmm. Then flip all resource discs in said connected line. And if there was a cube on the disc, you don't flip it. And then place cubes. If after flipping a resource disc, there is a resource space showing, you put a cube on it. Then you repeat one to three until no resource discs are in a connected line and the resource disc manipulation stage ends. There we go. No cubes on them at the start of the game. Thank you very much, Tony. Right, note, if all same coloured resource disks in a connected line each have a resource cube thereon, move these cubes on the resource disks to the active player's warehouse spaces of the corresponding rows, gain cubes and flip the resource disk. We'll get to that, to that later. Resource disks connected lines cannot be diagonal, yeah. And when connected lines form a T or an L, you may only resolve one line. Mm. And when the supply runs out of cubes of a particular colour, take a cube of that colour from any warehouse space. Right. Prior to the work stage, the player checks the current count of stores. If the cubes gained in the current round is greater than the number of stores, return the excess amount to the supply. I. I there's an, there's an image here which looks like this. So it looks like I have three stores. And you have three stores as well. It doesn't specifically say that, but we have an image where it's circled, so I'm assuming that's that.
So if you've got more than three cubes before the work stage, you lose them. Right. Opium point deduction. According to the number of black cubes gained in the current round and kept after returning excess amounts, advance the opium point deduction track on the shipping board. Which is this one. This. The one with the ship on, presumably. This. So you advance this for each opium mm -hmm. that you've kept, and this will be negative points, I believe. Okay. Uh, in order to reduce other players' downtime, the next player may begin their turn at this point. Right, the work stage. In the work stage, the player may take the following actions. Resource board action, shipping board action, wish at the city god temple, building card ability, and historical event effect. By paying one black cube, two cubes of any colour may be taken from the supply for use. So one opium converts to two of anything. Two cubes of any colour or colours. Yeah. Right, so the different options you've got are one, resource board action, which is this. Use one cube and advance the player marker corresponding to the cube by one space and then execute the effect on the arrived space. So basically move, move this marker along one. Um, Description of the spaces. So sailing allows you to advance any one space on the shipping board without paying the cube requirement. Uh, the shipping line must be unlocked. Okay, so at the moment we can ship to China, I guess, but we can't ship to these yet because they're not I unlocked. That for, oh yeah, because there's a lock symbol, no, okay, yeah. Some of them just depict a resource cube, so you just get that resource cube, which you can use immediately. These are five points at the end of the game. Uh, the mansion, Wherever that is. Oh, it's there. Yeah. Uh, that's points at the end of the game. Doesn't say how many. Uh, this is a building. Gain the building card from the supply. If the building card is not in the supply, you can advance an extra space on the row. So all of these red frame spaces look like they're buildings. Uh, that is remove one opium point deduction. So you move one space back on the black track. The die means you can roll the dice once and again gain a resource according to the die roll, yeah. which looks like it's printed here. And then the store is you advance your store marker by one space. So that's what all of those do. Second thing you can do is a shipping board action, which is pay the cube requirement between shipping spaces to advance the marker one space to the right. Um, the scroll is count points at the end of the game, which is an order. Don't know what that means yet. Uh, this is unlock the shipping line. Ah, so when you advance there, you unlock this one. And then when you advance there, you unlock this one. So that's how you unlock these ones. The red building here with the yellow background is advance any one space on the resource board without paying the resource cube. So here. Uh, Store track indicates the number of resources you can keep prior to the work stage. Opium point deduction. Uh, each one of these is minus five at the end of the game. Minus five points for each of these at the okay. end of the game. Right, the third thing you can do is wish at the city temple, which is pay one white cube or any two cubes to roll the dice two or three times respectively and gain cubes according to the rolls. You can only do this once per turn. Uh, using a building card. So you can use a building card ability once per round. The mansion is just, at the end of the game, gain the mansions on the card. Oh, this mansion card counts as two mansions. Yeah. Right, okay. Which presumably there's some thing <clears throat> for... Yeah. The veggie vendor is exchange one cube for any other non-black cube. So, yeah. Uh, the herbal shop is advanced the leftmost marker on the resource warehouse one space to the right. The tea shop is pay one green cube to advance any one marker on the shipping board, but the shipping line must be unlocked. Yeah. The grain shop is before your turn gain a white cube. And the numerology hall, after rolling the dice, you can adjust the value plus or minus one. Historical card effects. Use the historical event card 
I don't know where we're supposed to put this, but let's put it there. Um, which can also be used once per round. Right, end of a player's turn. Once your turn is over, all unused resource cubes are returned to the supply. And at the end of a round, we turn over one new historical event card and advance the black cube on the calendar space one forward. Final scoring. So at the end of the game, your resource board will score you points below the, uh, the, re the prestige points below the leftmost marker. So you need, you need to be advancing Everything. them equally. Uh, if a marker's on the last space, it's five points. The shipping board for the first, second and third shipping lines get one, two or three points per space. For the first three, did you say? For the first, second and third shipping lines. Yes. Respectively, gain one, two and three points per space. So that's one point per space. Oh, right. Two okay. points yeah, per I space, got it. Yeah. three points per space. Mm -hmm. Don't know where that's printed on them. Well, yeah. and did, did it say you've got to unlock them in order? As in, why wouldn't I unlock the three space then? Why wouldn't I move that one across and then leave that I mean, one there? You can't move that until it's unlocked. I know. And you unlock it by moving that one. Oh, yeah, it's, right, it's okay, yeah, yeah, here. I see. I got it, yeah, okay. Uh, historical event card scoring, whatever that is, and then deduct five points for each one of these. Uh, multiply the order total passed on the board by the number of mansions. Do not count the icon under the markers. This is back to the shipping board again. Multiply the, oh, oh orders. The, the scrolls multiply the order total passed on the board by the number of mansions right okay so basically it's the number of those icons that you've passed multiplied by the number of mansions that you have okay there we go tony did i get it right have, have we got the rules right i think we have yeah there's maximum of four man oh no five mansions Right, description of historical event card effect. So this is, at the start of the game, players take 0, 1, 2 or 2 cubes according to turn order and use immediately before the game starts. Okay? But I don't know. Um, Just take them? Uh, of what colour? Well, Any colour? It doesn't say. Can you have opium? It doesn't say. It does not say. It just says, uh, but it says you take them before the game starts. But you're not getting any anyway. Hmm? You're pl your first player, so you're getting zero. Oh, so I'm getting zero. So you get one cube. Yeah. There you go. Have a cube. Uh, Dardao Cheng. Okay, that sounds better. Mm. Dardao Cheng, rather than Dedoa Cheng. Mm, I don't know what colour I want. Tea? What, what, so I'm knocking what? Green tea? So if you keep your resource cubes here, we can keep we can keep it zoomed in at this and I'm level. just looking at this so I need a green cube to go across that line I need a white cube to go across that line yeah there we go so I can get a white cube up there but I need a red cube to go up there I don't know let's just take a green cube for now and see what happens right so I'm going first it's the warehouse stage I'm not going to do the warehouse stage because that's taking cubes which yeah so i do the resource disk manipulation stage so i get to do two things yeah and each one can be swapping or flipping yeah Ooh. Well, i think there's an obvious move there but I'm oh, are you thinking ever. making the line of three green no what are you thinking of doing? well perhaps i shouldn't tell you <laughs> no, don't tell me <laughs> well, i could flip that and flip that and get a four white Oh no, it's not four white. Flip that and flip that and get four white. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I'd get two white cubes. Yeah. But I don't want two white cubes. I want okay. green cubes. Fine. Yeah, so if I swap those two with my first one and then swap those two with my second one. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think that's better, possibly. Can take the same action twice. Prior to taking an action, if there was a cube there. Which there wasn't. Which there wasn't. Uh, full warehouse when moving a cube to the player's warehouse if there's already two cubes there. No, right. So gaining resources. 
So when three or four resource disks of the same type, I do the following. First of all, this one, I gain cube, so I get a green cube. Then flip the resource disks. If there was a cube on it, it isn't flipped. Then place cubes. So if after flipping a resource disk, a resource disk shows a resource space, which it doesn't, otherwise you would have taken one according to the corresponding to the colour of said resource space, and then repeat one to three until no resource disks are connected. Oh, so doing that, you could yeah. actually trigger another one. Yeah. I hadn't planned that. Right. So you've got to do the whites. Do the whites. So those three flip over and I get a white. Mm -hmm. And that... Oh no, then there's a three yellows. Now there's three yellows. Nice. So I get a yellow. All completely planned this. So <laughs> totally planned it. Uh, there wasn't anything on that, was there? No. Mm -hmm. Right, and now we've got these. So we now get two green cubes. Ah. Okay. And that is now me done. So they can't maybe flip? I believe so. If a cube is on a resource disk, it cannot be flipped. But remember, if you want to do something with those, you get that cube in your warehouse. See? Prior to taking an action, if a cube is on a resource disk that you wanted to use, you move the cube to the warehouse space of the same row as the player. Oh, so I can move it? Yeah, if it's three cubes. Why would I not? Okay. Hmm. This game's going to do my head in. It's going to do my head in as well. <laughs> this is going to, I mean, because we're on camera, we're probably going to be playing a lot faster than we would off camera. Yeah, I we, we have Cooper Island at 8 o'clock tonight. So we have, well, we have about 90 minutes. It should be a 45 minute game. So we should be fine. Because really, I should be thinking about this for ages, I think. Because, I mean, I can see a row of three there, but I can't think in ahead to what's going to flip and what's going to happen. I have no idea. Yeah, that's um, it. It's working out. Yeah future stuff exactly um because like if i flip that one mm -hmm. and i flip that one yep yeah. i've now got you remember you can only choose one oh because that'll flip those back over let's do that and then i'll flip that one Okay, so you have a line of three. I do. So you get a red. Yeah. And then they, they flip, pop your cubes here. All right, so they flip and then I should have a row of green if I've got it right. And after that, I've no idea what's happening. Yeah, yeah. so you got a row of green. So you get a green. Yeah. And then those flip. And that's the end of that. Done. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so now we go into the work stage. So basically, we can only keep three cubes each because of our current stores, yeah. which is fine. So we don't need to discard any. Then we move up on the opium track for every opium that we've got, yeah. which is none. It's fine. Uh, and although we can do this simultaneously, we'll, we won't. So the different things you can do, you can do the resource action on the resource board. You can do the shipping board. Uh, you can do rolling a dice to get stuff. You can use a building card ability. Or you can use the uh, historical card effect, which there isn't one. How do you build buildings? Hmm? Um, these. There are these here, the red, the red frame but spaces. Using a building card ability, I'm assuming it means you have to have built it first. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Absolutely no idea. I'm just going to play randomly because I don't know. What was the, those spaces again? Which space? Oh, that advanced your warehouse. That was it. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend a green cube yeah. to move on to there. And then I'm going to spend a white cube to move on to there, which unlocks East Asia. Yeah, which is why I took a green cube. Uh, and then I'm going to spend a yellow cube, because if you don't spend it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So I could. No, it's a white, isn't it? It's a white to do that, to roll the dice. 
So I'm just going to spend this yellow to move up on this track here. And that's me done. Which was the one to advance your warehouse? These? Yeah. Yeah, the icons there. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I think we're playing, and I think we've got the rules right. So yeah, if you're interested in watching this video to learn how to play, now you know how to play. Well, you know how to play, you don't know how to play. Yeah, I needed a white. We can trade. Two for one, isn't it? Oh no, it's black, it's opium. One opium gets you two cubes of any colour. Yeah. Right. So what can I do that's useful? Nothing much with that particular combination other than moving up uh, what does a ship symbol do moves one of the markers on here to the right without paying the cost so i can do let's just keep the cubes visible so people can sorry see. it doesn't make a lot of difference because i still can't unlock that because i can't i can't unlock this because i haven't got white yeah I can push that up too, but there's no cost there, so that's irrelevant. So what I'm going to do is push that up one with the green, and that up one with the green. Okay, so that's the two green spent. And, and then I'll red. push that up one with the red because I I think all I can do is try and set myself yeah. up for the next round really okay. with that combo because I just got whatever I could see was obvious to <laughs> flip there really without thinking about what I might want. Uh, Rick's here. Hello. Daddy Cheng, yeah, something like that. <laughs> right, end of a player turn, we've done. End of a round, we've done. So turn over one new historical card and we advance to round two. Um, doesn't say that the first player changes. I've not seen anything. So am I always first player? I guess so. Okay, right. So we have English merchant John Dodd completed the team manufacturing process in Taipei. So there is the building action, right? Which is basically, it looks like, what's the year? 1865. During the work stage, you get a green cube or a yellow cube. It's just a free thing. Yeah. And you can do as many actions as you want, can't you? Take the following actions. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that's easy. During so the work during the yeah stage three the work stage mm. so stage one i'm not going to do that so i get to swap some discs around so if i swap these two discs i just get the cubes i don't know if i want to do that i don't know if i want to do that right let's have a think if i put that there and then that there then they're going to flip over and then that's going to happen and then that's going to happen and then that's going to happen. Oh, oh it's, it's quite tricky to get these. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Very tricky to get them. Because they're black. So how do you get... Well, oh, you, you start you, swapping you, you things start from swapping. there to there. Yes, of course. Oof, right. I mean, I can get lines of three quite easily. I could get a line of four. What does a line of four do? Get oh, two cubes instead of but one. But you can only store three anyway. That's true. This is the issue. That is that the I'm issue. seeing at the moment, which is why I'm trying to get up here. But it's proving to be. And how do you increase your stores? That's this. So I need no, two. No, that's wine. this, isn't it? No. That's. But you said that was build. No, that. If you look at the icons, that is that. The build is the red frames. The icon in them it matches these. Oh, so oh, so I've been aiming. To, what's that then? That is advanced one thing on this track. Oh, so I should have been going for. I should be going for. Oh, okay. Anyway, I need. Yeah, and then you look at the colours that you need as well. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this requires a brain to work in a certain way that mine doesn't. Oh, I see. So I'm going to swap these two over. Okay. Yeah. 
then if I've understood this correctly I'm going to swap these two over and because I want to move this one I get that yeah okay then I go into my work stage so I've got a line of three red yeah so I get a red these all then flip over that gets a that gets a cube but that wasn't flipped okay oh that's the one you took it off of okay yeah but now I've got a line of three here yeah so that gets me a green cube yeah that doesn't flip that doesn't it's flip got a cube it's on got it, a cube on but it they do yeah and then I've got a line of three white which gets me a white cube and then those flip and I think I'm done uh, Miguel is here did you miss out on any opium penalties no not yet we're just getting started round two and Carl is here from N20 Games hi Carl thank you for joining in this one looks very thinky yes <laughs> Thinky in an abstract game kind of way. Yeah, I had a plan until you did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. You can't plan too much ahead. You can't at all, no, because you completely... The, the, the board's going to change. Because the board's changed so much, I can't see anything now. Um... Yeah, it's been ages looking. So, so I believe these boards are new in the second edition. Right. The first edition didn't have these at all. And I'm like, wow, th this must have just been the game. Okay. Tony will confirm that. Time for some combos. Yes. Yeah, I, can, I think. I, I can. <laughs> We're just getting started on it. I'm not going to get anything if I do that. There's a lot of thinking going on. There's a lot of thinking going on, but I don't see how I can get two, three things off of it this time. How did that end up there? I chose to manipulate a disc that Will had it? a cube on so it. So if I move that one, it will come over here. Yeah. Move it or flip it. Won't move work. it or flip it. So I'm going to do that as my first thing. So yeah. I now have a row of yellows, but once they flip, I need a row of something else from them flipping. So if I do that, I'll get at least two things. I can't see a way okay. to get three things. There we go. It might happen, but I can't think, spend the time to think that far ahead, really, with as we're doing it live. So, um, so I get a yellow. Yeah. They flip. They all flip. You gave me a line of reds. You get a red. I get a red. They flip. Yeah. I don't think I end up with anything after that. Nope. No. Okay. So the work stage. We discard down to our shops and then I'll go first. So I've got a red. I'm going to spend the red to advance along here, which allows me to advance along any one of these. So I'll advance along this track, which gets me a tea shoppy, which I can use on my turn by spending a green cube to move along the C track, but I don't know whether I will do that because I can spend a green cube to move along the C track anyway. Um, I'll spend the white to move along here, which gets me the roll of a die. Oh no, I can spend a white to roll it twice. But that doesn't advance on this. Um, I'll just I'll just advance on this. 
Because there's points here, isn't there? Yeah. So we've got a four, which is a red. I'm also going to use this uh, for a yellow or a green. Ooh. Ooh. I'll take a green. So I've used that. Yeah. I'm then going to use the green to move me onto there. I'm then going to use this green to activate my T-Shop to move that onto there, which gets me to do one of these. Mm -hmm. um, and I will choose that one, which gets me a store. And then I'm going to spend the red to move that onto there, which unlocks that. Yeah. And I'm done. I think that's right. Yeah. Anybody Same. watching who knows how no, to play the game? It appeared to be right. Uh, so I'm going to spend the red yeah. to move up there to get a white. Yeah. I'm going to spend the white to move up there to roll the dice. Mm -hmm. Which is a nothing. Typical. Yeah. That is absolutely what happens to me every time I roll a dice in a game with luck, isn't it? Um, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to spend a yellow. To move up there. Yeah. I'm going to use this to get a yellow. Yeah. Which I'm going to spend to move up there again, which gives me that. Yeah. So I've now turned any any cube into any other cube, but I've run out of cubes for yeah. now. And I think that's it. Yeah. So round three, another event card. And we have 1853, the Dimjix Joe conflict, which looks like we lose a cube. No, that's not good. 1853. Prior to the work stage, return one cube to the supply. Now, I don't know if that's before you have to discard down or afterwards. Because the discarding down is prior to the work stage. Let's say it's afterwards. Because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, neither of us have got any opium. I don't know if this, that's something we should be doing. So I could skip the second bit and just take those two green cubes if I wanted to. I think so. I'm yeah. not going to, but I could. Um, now, how can I get some opium? Do I want any opium? That's the question. That is indeed the question. Right, so if I put that... What colours do I want? I need to look at what colours I want. So even with loads of storehouses, getting extra cubes is actually quite tricky. I think. Seems to be. It does appear to be. Yeah. I think possibly what you need to do is build up in here. But you can you can still only take two? Two warehouses. Two warehouses. Which is, so you which could is get four. four. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about building a warehouse. I, I could only get two last time. I probably could have got three if I'd spent half an hour looking at it. But Right, I'm going to swap. Swap those two over first. And then... I'm going to swap those two. So because I swapped that one, that actually yeah. goes there. And now I've got a line of four, which is two green cubes. They then flip. I then got a line of three, which is a white, and they flip. And then I got a line of three yellow, so I get yellow, and then those flip. And I think that's it. Yep. Yeah. Right, you'll go.
gonna swap these two. And I'm gonna flip that one. So I've got a line of three. Yep, so you get a white. I've got yeah. a line of four, so we get red. two reds. And that's it. Okay, right, so we go into the work stage, we discard down to the number of stores we've got, and then we lose a cube. So, choose what you want to lose. I'm going to lose yellow. I'm going to lose a white. Okay, so now I go. I'm going to spend a green to move on here. Then I'm going to spend another green at the tea shop to move on here. Um, then I'm going to spend a white to just move on this track. And that's me done. Right, so I'm going to spend a red to move up to there, which gets me this. Uh -huh. I don't know what it does. So I will guess move one. these over here. Yeah, it solves my dice rolling problem. It does. I'm going to spend the other red to move up on there again, which gets me a yellow. I assume these can only be used once each round. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, I could have, well, yeah, have fully, fully wild cubes. I'm going to spend that as a white, sorry, as a green. Using your veggie vendor. Using my veggie vendor to move up there, to move that up, which unlocks that one. Yep. Okay. Round four. 1878, establishing of Fazu Gong Temple. Which means, during the work stage, may roll the die twice and gain cubes according to the rolls. Okay, so that's what that does. Right, my go. I don't want to take any cubes from the warehouses, so let's look at doing other stuff. Are we going to try and get some opium? I think we are. Let, let's try and get myself some opium. And how do I do that exactly? But you can flip them, can't you? Yeah. So the opium, as you say, you've got to start moving things out of the corner. Mm. But the first time you do that, you won't get anything. Yeah, you will. You do two swaps. Yeah, that's the, the yeah. The first swap, you won't get anything. You'd have to do it with the second swap. <coughs> I mean, I could get a line of four opium. You could. In fact, he can't not. If you could make a line of three, you made a line of four. Yeah. They should do it every two rounds. But then it could get moved. But yeah, okay. Now let, let, let's do it and let's see what happens. So I'm going to swap those over. First swap. Second swap. Right. And what did opium do? You can did trade opium in. For one for two? One for two. Oh, but it gets you negative points. And it's negative points at the end of the game. It's minus yeah. five for each one. But I'm going to try and get rid of it because of this. Right. So there's a line of four, so I get two opium. I then flip them over. So we have resource cube, tastic, on all of these. So one on there, one on there, one on there, one on there. Then there's a line of three, so I get a yellow, and these two flip, but not that one. And then we get a green on here, and then I've got a line of three green, so I get a green, uh, and these two flip. And how many can you store? Four. Okay. Yeah, so I'm all right. I'm good. Right, you'll go. Uh, Paul S is here. Hi, Paul and Paul. Yes, Mr. Brain Burner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, you'll go. So 
so now I can only steal four. That's three. Mm -hmm. But if I don't, you just get all of those. What, next turn? Yeah. What, if I choose to? Yeah. Well, I don't get them. They go in here. Oh, but you're right, they'll all go in here. Once the second one goes in here, the rest overflows. Oh, to they me. won't all go in there because you can only store two. Yeah, but then the extra one goes to you, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. Full warehouse. When moving a cube to a player's warehouse, if there's already two cubes there, the player gains the cube. Now, what was that rule that we missed reading earlier? If all same coloured resource discs in a connected line each have a resource cube on them, move these cubes on the resource disc to the active player's warehouse spaces, gain cubes of these resource discs colour and flip the resource discs. What? <laughs> no idea what you just said. So normally when you're resolving a line and getting the cubes, yeah. you flip them all over, but if there's cubes on them, you don't flip the ones yeah, yeah. that have got resource cubes. But it's now saying, if they've all got a resource cube on, yeah. you get the cubes. So if I do that... Yeah, it's badly worded. So if I do that, I'm going to get all of those cubes? No. When you're flipping them... That just flipped by accident, didn't it? I think... It didn't, because it otherwise... Didn't. No, it wouldn't. Right. When you're flipping them, because you've resolved it, if they all had cubes on, something special happens. But it doesn't make sense. It says, move these cubes on the resource disks to the active player's warehouse spaces of the corresponding rows, comma, gain cube or cubes of these resource disks, colour, comma, and flip the resource disks. So yeah. Whoa. Anybody who knows the answer to that, please let me know. I'll look it up while you're thinking. I've no idea what you're even trying to no, say. So it, The wording is, is very, very odd. Let's see if I can find an answer. might be tricky to find an answer to this but there's a few rules questions but uh, yeah literally there's three rules questions uh, and none of them are gonna okay, none of them answer thing. the question never mind yeah maybe somebody will know that's literally only gonna get me one cube Unless I do that, which might help. Two cubes. I've been better off swapping that one with the cube on it. Never mind. Okay. Right. Are we done? Yeah. So I can keep four. Yeah. But I've moved this marker up two spaces because I've got two opium. Right. Are you sure this first player thing never moved around? Well, I didn't read. I didn't see anything. Do you want to have a look? Mm. I didn't see I anything. It, well, because I guess it means I'm all. Yeah. No, I think that's all right. It mm. just—it's just weird. Otherwise, you'd have two goes. It's just I keep but. seeing good moves when it's your turn and not yeah. when it's my yeah. turn. Right. I am going to spend the green cube on the tea shop, which seems weird, but to move that one space forward on there. 
Um, but otherwise, you'd be going twice in a row. So yeah, which which, which wouldn't make sense. No. Um, what are we going to do then? What are we going to do next? Uh, I'm going to use this bl black as if it's two green. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use one of those green to move along here. I'm going to use this black as if it was a green and a a white. Then I'm going to use those two green to move up here. One, two. That moves allows me to move to there. Then I'm going to use this white to move along the bottom track, which is a, a grain shop, which I can immediately use to get some rice. Oh, I've also got this. Yeah. Two and a three. What's that? White and a yellow. So I've used the grain shop this turn. So then I use a white to move along to there, which drops that back down by one. Um, I'll then use the two yellow to move to there and then there, which is another one of those. And then I've got another white, which moves that to there. Right, and that is me done. That was a productive turn. <coughs> So I'm going to spend that red to do that, which then does that, which does that. Um, I'm then going to roll. I can do this at any time. Yeah, anytime. yeah. So let's roll them both. And you can adjust one of them. Uh, and I can adjust one of them. Do I care? Uh, well, I want a red. What's a red? A four. Uh, do I want a green? Probably not. What do the scrolls do? Number of scrolls at the end of the game that you've passed multiplied by the number of mansions that you've got is points. Okay. Um. How are we doing for time? I think down there. Six o'clock. Yeah, we'll be fine. Let's take we'll a yellow. Done. We'll be done with this in half hour ish. Uh, I'll make that. Actually, I don't really care about using it, to be honest. Um, a five is a green, yeah, you've got which I can then spend as something else you've anyway. Got veggie vendor. Yeah, as long as I got that, it's my, my, my notoriously bad rolling doesn't affect me because only ones and sixes are bad. Um, so then I spend two yellows for a mansion and then another move up there. Is it a man it's a mansion mansion, that one. Isn't it? Um, that that's a oh, mansion, that. and that's that. a move up there. Okay, right. Sorry. Uh, then I spend the green for a scroll. Done. Okay. Next round. So round five of six, and we have 1860. The Tamsui Treaty Port opened, which looks like everybody gets a free shipping move. Why it's in the bottom left and not the bottom right, I'm not sure, but that's how it is. Right, I don't want to choose the taking cubes from my warehouse, so what am I going to do? Oh, look at that! Oh, there's a big one there, isn't there? Let's do that then. So let's swap those over, which means that goes there. Mm. And what else can I do? I can do some shenanigans here by swapping those two over. So now I get two green. And then these flip, but that one doesn't. Mm -hmm. Then I get a white and those flip. Then I get two red. That wasn't part of the plan, but that's quite cool. And then these flip. And that's it. Yeah, it's all right. I'll have that. I bet you will. You ruined my move again. Oliver's gone. Thank you for joining in.
They don't seem to be able to manipulate these to ever get more than two. I keep seeing brilliant moves on your turn and nothing on my turn. Yeah, I can think one move beyond my first one, but I, I didn't even think I was going to get any red. Yeah, no, I can only move, think one move, but I can't even see a second move here that's very useful. Well, this will be the quietest playthrough we've ever done, just because the amount of... I'm not criticising, I'm just saying it's one of those games where you need to... It's not a great one for a video, is it? No, I'm feeling the pressure to move too quick and I'm not getting anything out of this. a lot of staring at the board. So, if I swap those two... You get that cube. That cube goes, goes there. into there. Yeah. So, I've got a low row of reds, but the row... Of Greens is now not going to work. Can I swap? Yeah. Those two. Okay. But I'm still only getting two. You're getting three. You're getting three cubes. Okay, so I'll get red. Get a red. The reds flip. And there's a line of four greens. Oh, there's a line of four greens. So yeah. there is. So you get two green. And then those two flip. And then there you go. Yeah. Okay, so I discard down to five. We're all good. Spending of cubes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have my free ship movement first. And I'm just going to move that to there. Because I can. Uh, I'm going to spend these two red to move along here, which gets me a white. Um, I am then going to spend that with a white to lose another opium. Um, what else am I going to do? I'll spend a green to move along here, which moves one of these along. So I'm going to move this one along. Now that gets me a building that isn't there, which means I think it said you skip over that and you get the next one. Oh, is that what happens? I think so. Just pass me the rule book. I think I remember reading that. That would be good, because that would change what I'm doing. <laughs> building. If the building card is not in the supply, the player may advance an extra space on the row. So yeah. Right. Now, I've got another green here, so that green is going to go on here. Um, now, I've got a white. I don't really want that white. Can I do something with the white? I can. I can roll two dice. So let's spend the white to roll two dice. What have we got? A two and a four? So what's that? A white and a red. Oh, what's the free action this time? Move a ship thing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Okay, I'll spend a red to move that onto there. I'll spend a yellow to move that to there. And then I've got this white, but I don't actually want to use it, but I'm going to. I'll just move the white to there. I'll lose an opium, but I can't because I've already got one. Right, you'll go. I didn't do my tea shop. Oh, did I do the tea shop? Oh, I didn't do my grain shop. I'll get, a, I'll get a white for the grain shop and then spend it and put that there. Oh, no, in fact, no, hang on. That two white, instead of doing that, will move that to there. Right, now I'm done. Okay, so there you go. I'm getting my free ship action. Uh, right, MG, to just seen a reply on BGG to a question about the number of resource cubes. Somebody asked, uh, yeah, the total number of resource cubes is 50. We changed the last minute, so it is correct. Excellent. Right, so we have 11 of each colour plus 6 black, which makes sense, because you, you, the black ones are a lot harder to get. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I've done is I've had my free ship action, which went up there, which 
got me one move up there. Yeah. I spent my one green of my greens as a yellow. Yeah, so that's used. So that's used to get me this. So I'm going to use that. What does that do again? Oh, move your move, move my thing up every turn. One. Yeah. To move. Can it be an easy board? Sure. Uh, I'm going to move this one anyway. Herb, herbal shop. Yeah. On the resource warehouse. Yeah, there should be an icon on there telling you what it is. Yeah. Thank you, MG, for looking up that answer. Um, we still don't understand that one line in the rule book. I'll spin the red no to move that up to get a green. I'll spin the green. I'll spin two greens to move that up twice. You've already taken that building, so that moves to there. Yep. Right. Done. Round six. Final round. And the event is 1920 restructuring of the district system with a whole load of icons that I can't see because they're hidden by the background picture. 1920. At the end of the game, the player having the most building cards and mansions gains an additional five points. Okay. Extra points at the end of the game for the player with the most stuff. Most buildings. So wh how, what builds that? Where's this? Oh, I see. Okay. So I need two greens. So I could choose to take them, but I'm not going to. Because that's... I could get more. I'm sure I could get more. But I desperately need green, actually, to move this up. Because you only get the leftmost points for the... The points for the leftmost one. Yeah. So am I going to be happy with three green? Oh, that's amazing if I get that to the end. Mm. And then I don't do any shenanigans in here. Hmm, interesting. What do I do? I think you really need to stop looking at this when it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, because it all changes. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm going to do it. Because we've not done it before, so I'm going to take all of the cubes from two resource spaces okay. and skip step two. Done. There you go. So you can be looking at it. <laughs> so... That's really unfortunate. So if I flip that one. Got to get greens. Got to get two greens. Um, but that would. Yeah. No, red would be all right as well, though. Uh, I'll swap those two. Oh yeah, no. If you manipulate a disc with a cube on it, it goes into your warehouse. But if your warehouse was full, it goes to you. Yeah, that's what that means. I'll have a look through these while you're thinking. So you've done one swappage. I've done one swappage. So the whites are going to flip. So I could flip that and then I just get one white and one red. If you put a yellow here. If I put a yellow there, I get four, I get two yellows, but yellows are not what I need. 
screens is the problem. So those two are green. That one with that one. Swap that one with that You'll one. That's four gonna, green. I'll end up with four. Yeah, I will. Hang on. That one. That one. I was trying to do something with the blacks. Yeah. So I could get a black and. But okay. I just can't spend long enough thinking about it. So you get a white. I get a white. Let's flip over. Yeah. Probably should be putting these that there. You know. There. You then get two green. Yeah. It makes more sense, doesn't it, to put them there? Oh, no, it doesn't because there's not five spaces. <laughs> okay. Because the numbers are not. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it. That's it. Right. So I've got three green, but I'm going to use my grain shop to get a white. I'm then going to spend the first green at the tea shop to move this along one. And then I'm going to spend my other green to move this. And I get three of these movements. So I go one. Which is the tea shop that's already gone. How have I got the tea shop? Did I take the wrong building earlier on? I think I did. You're on it. That thing's on it. Yeah, I've just moved on to it. I took it when I was here. I was cheating. No, oh, you should have had that one. I should have had the no, the veggie vendor. Oh, I had that before you, long before you. Anyway, you should have flipped, skipped over it then. Yeah. So you've been cheating for the whole game because you've been taking extra stuff that you can't get because it's way up higher, isn't it? Oh no, it's there. No. And I didn't bother going for it because you had it. Yeah. So anyway, let's get to that. We get there. Um, so that was one movement. Two movement. Which will be that one. And then three movement, which will be that, which is the herb shop, which I haven't got, so I go into there, which is a boat. The boat movement will be there which is another one of these, which is that, which gets me a green. Yep, combo-tastic. Uh, then another green on here gets me a mansion. Um, yeah. That's... Then how do I get a red? How do I get a red? Can't get a red. So another green gets me on there, and then a white. Oh, well, white gets me two dice. It is two dice, isn't it? It is two dice. So nothing and a white. <laughs> and then I'll spend the white to move on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is me done. Yeah, I'm going to spend two green to do that. And get that. I'm going to spend a white to get two dice. Let's just pop the match in here. Uh, two and a four, one of which I can change. Yeah. So I'm going to move that up there. What does this mean? Are these points? Yeah, your left, your leftmost one will get you the points shown. Okay. So a two is a white, which you've just done. So. Sorry. Well, you rolled a two and a four, and then you moved that up. Oh, right, okay, right. So that was that. But you've not taken your cubes for this yet? No, I've not taken my cubes for that. So that was that one. That's why I moved it to work out with what colours I might want these to be. Right. Or whether I wanted to adjust stuff. So if I take two as a white. Yeah. And then I take four as anything and use this to turn as it a, into a white. a white. Yeah. Okay, done? Yeah. Right, scoring. Right, final scoring is... Resource board. The prestige point below the leftmost marker. 10. 15. Do we have any way of tracking it? No, there's no score pad. So 15, 10. Full warehouse. If a marker on the resource warehouse is on the last space. <laughs> yeah. I was close. Could have done it. So 15, 10. Mm. Shipping board. For the first, second, and third line shipping lines, respectively, gain one, two, and three points per space. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What? 22, 25, 28, 31, 34, 37, 40. That's insane. Onto my 15 is 55. 
I didn't realise you'd done nearly that much. Yeah. So what was it? Yeah, I, I only moved one shipping line. So it's one point per space. Six. Okay. So I'm on 55, you're on 16. Yeah. <laughs> Multiply the order total passed on the board by the number of mansions. So I have passed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven orders. And I have got one, two, three, four, five mansions. So that's another 35. So I'm on 90. Um, it's three times one. <laughs> So you're on 19. <laughs> Historical event card scoring. So whoever got the most buildings and mansions and stuff. Yeah. Now, does it count these? <coughs> I think it does. It's not completely clear, but I think it counts these. Most building cards and mansions. So I have three building cards and one, two, three, four, five mansions. Yeah. I've got three mansions and four building cards. So you've got more? No, you've got more. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So that's another five, so 95. And then do five points for each recorded open. I haven't even got three mansions. I'm blind lying because I didn't realise that the two mansions were different. Oh, they are? You took the first one. We. So I didn't realise. Nor did I. Okay. Wow. Okay. I, I was assuming they were both two, so I just took the one that was there. So actually, I've got one point less than I said because of the multiplier. So you got eighteen. Yeah. So ninety-five plays eighteen. Yeah. This is a bit like the first place the time we played um, the town <laughs> centre. Yeah. Well, there we go. So not being able to get those, manipulate those to get the cube, enough cubes. Yeah. But basically, not feeling like I had enough time to do it. Really. I mean, I, I cheated because I did took, cheat. Actually, I took the yeah. tea shop. So that was when I shouldn't you. have taken the yeah, tea shop. So you were getting cubes a lot earlier. Well, no, it wasn't getting the cubes. It was the fact that I could use the tea shop to spend one green cube to move past all of these double cost right, spaces. Okay. So I never paid <laughs> double, double cost on these at all. Okay. I just used the tea shop. So yeah. slightly cheating. Yeah. But it was that round where I got the opium. Yeah. Which got me five cubes, including two black. Yeah. And those two black. Yeah. That was where I was trying to get opium because I could see that my this one was coming up here. And I was going to lose stuff off here, and I, I hadn't taken any penalties for the opium at that point. Yeah. But I couldn't see a, a decent way to get an opium and something else mm -hmm. in a round. So there we go. That is Dadao Cheng. There's a couple of rules I'm not 100% sure about. I will go on to BGG and I will ask. There's a couple of bits in the rulebook that are, that are not completely clear. Um, it's very much an abstract game here. It's very much a staring It's not a at the game board. you want to play on a live stream. Well, it was all right. It was all right for you. I, on your round, I could see really good moves quickly. <laughs> on my round, I'm thinking, I just can't see anything. I didn't plan too much ahead. I just worked out what I was going to get. Yeah. And then and then I, sometimes I, I looked into a third one. But yeah, you could spend uh, ages looking yeah, at the board. you could. Um, there are people I would not want to play this with. Yeah. It plays relatively quickly. I mean, it would be a lot longer with four. Yeah. And I think you would I think you would probably try and try... I would be... If we weren't on a live stream, I would have been thinking about these a lot, lot longer, mm -hmm. because taking two or three cubes is terrible. Oh, taking two cubes when you can store three is terrible. Yeah, and you want to be three getting, when you can store five is pretty. You awful. want to be getting four cubes. Yeah, five if you can. Yeah, but yeah, it's very difficult to do. Um, so there you go. So yes, thank you very much for like everybody for watching. I really like it. Um, yeah. I hope you found it useful in you know an experience of learning the game from the rule book, and you got to see how it plays out. Um, yeah, that's about it. So as I mentioned at the start, this video and a lot of the other content that I make is purely funded through my Patreon campaign. Jan is in the chat. Uh, thank you very much, Jan, for your support. Um, yeah, excellent. Thank you for your support. And yeah, if you're a Patreon supporter, you've got access to the Slack channel where you can join in all sorts of conversations that are going on, uh, discussions about games, discussions about the weather, discussions about online gaming. Uh, all sorts of things. There's a nice little community on there as well. What I don't do is I don't do any Patreon-only content. It's one of the things that I don't really want to do. So 
All of the content that I do make, none of it is exclusive for Patreon supporters. Um, but there are other benefits as well. As I say, there's the Slack channel. Um, one Patreon supporter at the end of this month is going to be entered into a contest. Well, no, everybody's going to be entered into the contest. Somebody's going to win a copy of Maracaibo. So yeah, free games. I give a free games every month. Last month was Madeira. The month before that was Oathsworn. I've given away a copy of On Mars, I think. Maybe? No. Can't remember. Escape Plan. Anyway, I give loads of games away every month. Um, you gave away a copy of Brass Birmingham. I gave away a copy of Brass Birmingham. Because I had then had to give it away again. <laughs> you didn't have to give it away, well, but you did. Well, I already had it, so... <laughs> it is now 6.30. Um, at 8 o'clock tonight, so in one and a half hours' time, I am doing a live tutorial and playthrough video for Cooper Island. Cooper Island is a pretty heavy game. Um, I've played it yesterday. Um, I've been practicing, learning the rules and teaching the rules. I'm going to be doing that again in the next hour. You're going to get a teach of it now and then again later on. Uh, and we're going to be basically setting up ready for Cooper Island. So if you're interested in Cooper Island, 90 minutes time, I'm going to go set up, cook dinner, eat dinner, sort it all out, and then I'll be with you tonight. Again, thank you very much to everybody for joining in. Joe's here in the chat. Um, yeah, Paul wins again. Hi, Joe. But we are disappearing now, but hopefully... See you later on. Right, until next time, take care everyone. We'll see you later. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com